All right, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the three simple steps to automate your project management system. So this video is a lot different from all the other videos on our channel. It's not about lead gen or booking more appointments or anything of that sort. It's more operations oriented. I am pretty good when it comes to automations. If you don't know, my name is Nick Abraham. I'm the founder at Leapbird. And we were at about 30 clients at the beginning of this year. But now, seven months later, we're at 110 active clients. And I didn't do this by hiring a ton of employees or increasing my overhead a ton. I just built a really robust project management system that I'm continuously developing and evolving to be what it is. And it's something that any one of you guys can do. And by doing so, I was kind of able to walk away from a lot of the day-to-day -day operations to focus on really building the business and record YouTube videos just like this one. So I'm super excited to show you the entire process I've taken and I hope you guys can learn from it as well. And, and if this video is of any value, you're able to kind of streamline your operations, do me a favor, just like, comment, subscribe to the channel so this can continuously keep growing and I'll be more motivated to keep pushing out videos just like this one. So let's get right into it. So the first thing is, is that you need to have some kind of project management software installed in your business, right? If you don't get it, it's absolutely essential to growing and documenting and building a great business, right? You don't wanna be a freelancer, you wanna have a real business. And truthfully, if you don't have a team, I wouldn't really worry about like doing all of this, kind of still on that freelancer level, and that's totally okay. But once you start to, to build a team, you know, you've hired your first, your second, or third employee, start to take some of these frameworks that I'm teaching you and build it into your business. So like I said, have some kind of project management software installed. It could be Notion, it could be Airtable, it could be Asana, it could be Trello, it could be whatever you want. Right? I use Notion because I think the UI is very clean and sleek, it looks nice, it's modern, and it's not as clunky as some of these other ones, but hey, you could be completely different and that's totally okay. But the main thing is, is in all these project management softwares is that you get to create a database. So what you're looking at right here, this is a database. And in the database, you can create a list view. A lot of people like the Kanban views and some of these other views that you can build inside of a database, but I like a list view and the main reason why is because you don't really need much training on a list view because it just looks like a to-do list, right? So easiest to train a team on, it's just gonna naturally be intuitive for them to understand how to use it. So that's kind of why I like having a list view. And then for all the records, you wanna make sure that they have these fields that are you know pre-filled in and everything of that sort and I'll kind of talk about how you can do that. But you wanna make sure that each record in this database has date assigned, the due date, the task category, the client, the status, and the main assignee. And I'll kind of talk about why I chose these specific things. And you know, depending on what you're selling and what you're doing, you may need some more, right? But for us, this is like the stuff that we need. And after you have done this first section of this video, right? Then come in and watch the rest of this. But the first thing that you wanna to do to, to be able to automate your project management is identify all of the recurring tasks that need to happen to run your business properly, right? So this is something that takes a while, right? And it's something that you continuously need to build upon. Like you're not gonna be able to list out every single thing that you need in your business today. And you'll realize a month down the road, three months down the road, that some of the stuff that you're doing on a recurring basis don't really drive the needle, it shouldn't be done. And Sometimes you'll realize there are things that you need to be doing on a recurring basis that you aren't yet. And so this is something that you'll build over time. Like try to get like 50% of the work done today, but like always put something on your calendar, a recurring task, at least once every quarter to review like what's there, what's not, so that you continuously just keep developing this. And like you can even look at my whiteboard in my home office. I literally have a whole bunch of things that I'm about to add as recurring tasks within our project management so that you know, our fulfillment just continuously keeps getting better. And so the way you get this to automate inside of your project management is you get this app called Zapier and you're gonna create a zap, right? So you're gonna create the trigger to be the time that it happens at, right? So if you're doing this every day or every month or every week, you can choose what week, what day, and the time that it happens. And basically it's gonna set up a trigger. And then the action step is simply creating a record for the actual thing. So I could say, okay, every day at 9 a.m. I'm gonna create a task and I'm gonna assign it to all of my CSMs. That's gonna be the main assignee, my CSMs. And for the client, I'm just gonna put the company, right, Leaper. And for the task category, I'm gonna say inbox zero, to put the due date as today and the date assigned as today, right? And I could say that every day, this task is gonna be created as an action and assigned to our CSMs. And they'll mark it as done when they get it finished. And so that's, the simple flow of it, right? So just list out all the different recurring tasks and then create a specific zap for each one of those that 
runs on a scheduled time. That's it. It's very simple. This is the first step. It's the easiest one to knock out because it doesn't take much thinking or like much actual work to do inside of Zapier. The second one's a little bit more difficult, but it's pretty essential, right? And it's going to sound kind of confusing, but you got to kind of sit back and think about your business and see how you can apply it. But you just got to identify all the triggers and action steps for every single task within your agency. So not really recurring tasks. Let's say something happens in your business, right? Do or die situation, whatever it may be. Like what is going to happen after that? So for us, like if one of our clients campaigns hits 75% completion, like I need to make sure that our team is being proactive and gets assigned a task to start working on their next campaign. So I don't wait till it hits 100% completion and then we're scrambling, right? And similarly, like if something bad happens, like our campaign bounce rate gets above a certain percentage, like 3%, I need to assign a task to our team to go pause that campaign and figure out what's happening, maybe go re-verify the leads and everything of that sort. So this one's a little bit harder to kind of think about, but you just want to figure out how you can identify a trigger and what is that action step after. And so for us, like we're able to get this data inside of Airtable. And so I'm able to create a zap where Airtable is the trigger. So I can say, if this campaign gets above 3% in Airtable, assign this task accordingly. So this one's a little bit harder to think about, and it's one of those things that you'll once again build over time. Like things will just start breaking in your business and you'll start to just naturally think like, oh wait, if I did this review step or if I created this zap, I could have made sure that you know that didn't happen, right? And so that's how you'll start to think over time, and that's great. The last one is just really identifying where your team is messing up and placing reviews in there to make sure it doesn't happen again. So for me, like our team always struggled to document certain things like inboxes properly in Airtable. And whenever I would need it to go do something else, I would notice that it's not updated and not taken care of correctly. And so that would be a huge issue because we'd be start scrambling. I'd have to yell at them. I'd have to tell them to go get this stuff fixed and it's just tedious. And then I got to wait for them to get it fixed so I can continue what I'm doing. It's just annoying. It's terrible to do. And so I identify areas where our team just consistently messes up. And then I place a recurring task for a manager to review it to make sure that it's actually taken care of. And I put someone in charge, not myself, because I want to add to my workload because I have to build the business. I need things to be reviewed so that the business runs smoothly. Right. And so while you're you know, implementing this, while your team is starting to take on more of your workload so that you can focus on building the business, you get to see where they're messing up and you find commonalities and you're able to create recurring tasks, give it to a manager to be able to review work. And that's how you kind of automate the project management. Right. So these are the three things that I would recommend you do. And like I said before, it's something that you build on over time. Now let's talk about some of the advanced stuff that you can do once you implement some of this. Stuff. So the first one, it's probably one of my favorites, is I get to send my employees notifications when they're overdue on task. And I get to also see when they're overdue on task and keep tabs. And if you have a manager that's overseeing stuff as well, you can send it to them as well. So every day inside of Integromat, it runs an automation where it'll go inside of our Airtable. It'll go look at the due date and see if it's overdue. And any task that's overdue, it sends it to the CSM or not the CSM, but any of the employees. Let's them know, hey, this task is overdue. It links them straight to that. And it also sends me a message so that I can say, okay, you know, this task has been overdue for three days. Let me go check in on what's going on, right? And I get to take a quick little peek. And so this is a really good automation to build in once you kind of have this kind of structured out. The other thing is when you start to collect all this data on all the tasks that are being assigned, the tasks that are, you know, like the type of task that's being assigned, the clients that are, you know, having tasks come from them, everything of like that sort, you can kind of be able to gather a ton of data, right? So I can review on a monthly basis, like what client is asking the most out of us, right? And then I can kind of look at, okay, hey, am I charging them enough? Does it actually make sense? Or, you know, are they holding us back because they're requiring so much for us and we're not getting compensated accordingly? I can look at, hey, this CSM, this quarter, like comparing to the, the previous quarter, you know, their tasks are constantly getting, you know, delayed. So what's going on? Like what causes uptick? I get to speak to them. Maybe I could bring it up on a review. And there's just so many things that you could do based on just seeing the data inside of Airtable. I could look at what is the most common type of task that we have within our agency. And then I get to hire more people to, you know, maybe share the workload or be dedicated to that task. And so there's just a lot of data that you can collect by being able to build out a project management system and really doing it accordingly, right? The last one's probably my favorite, right? You can round robin task according to the position they're in. And by doing so, you can build kind of like a load balancing system. So your team isn't getting overworked and it's infinitely scalable. So for me, I used to have to, at one point, look at all of our CSMs and say, okay, hey, this CSM is gonna be assigned to this new client that we onboarded. And that was tedious, that was annoying. 
now I've built an automation where it automatically assigns and round robin CSMs to the new clients that we onboard. And then guess what? It makes it way scalable. So now when I get a new CSM in, they get to be added into this round robin and they're not gonna just get overloaded with a lot of clients to start off with. It builds a really good system where they start to layer on clients over time, but the more experience they get, the more confidence that they get, they just get more clients. And that's how this round robin works. You can do this across like any of your tasks. And so that's basically the three simple steps to automate your project management. Hopefully I gave you a ton of ideas on how you can implement this within your business. And hey, if this video was of any value to you, hopefully it was, do me a favor, drop me a like, drop me a comment, and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna drop a ton of videos like this so that you can implement this in your business to hopefully walk out of fulfillment, increase your actual success rate with clients, and just build an amazing business for yourself and your family.